Welcome everyone to another video. Today is tip number four on how to increase privacy and security on your computers, which includes Windows and Mac and even iOS and Android devices. And today's topic is VPNs or virtual private networks, what they are and why you should use them. Now a virtual private network, basically in short, it's a piece of software you can use to encrypt the data going to and from your computer over the internet and it will also hide your IP address. This is a must have if you use public Wi-Fi because those networks are often not secure and this will help protect you against hackers and other threats. It also will help prevent tracking against websites and other advertisers and I also recommend that you use a VPN if you're using the internet service at say your local school or an employer or even at home because it can help prevent tracking against your internet service provider as well. Now I do also want to just clarify right off the bat that a VPN does not make you anonymous. Yes, it is a privacy tool, but it's more of a security tool than anything. Keep in mind that in order to use a VPN, you have to download and install an application and you're often going through a service. And for that reason, you are not anonymous. Now at the end of this video, I will list options as far as VPN services that I recommend. However, I understand that your needs may not be exactly what my needs are and people do like options. And so what I wanna do is just go over some general guidelines as far as what you should look for when looking or shopping for a VPN. Now, a lot of VPN services are going to market two major things, and that's gonna be their jurisdiction or where they're headquartered, as well as whether or not they log or do not log their users. When it comes to jurisdiction, they're gonna talk a lot about the five eyes, the nine eyes, and the 14 eyes. And I will link an article down below in the notes down in the video description in case you don't know what those are referring to, but basically it comes down to an alliance of surveillance. The idea is if you're using a VPN outside of the 14 eyes, the chances of you being a victim to surveillance goes down. However, I do wanna emphasize that to some degree that is marketing. Now I'm not saying that it's not important to be aware of where the service you're using is headquartered or based or where the jurisdiction lies. But also please keep in mind that regardless of where the company is based, if someone wants to get your data and has enough authority, enough power, enough leverage, or enough know-how, there's a good chance they're still going to be able to do it. In my opinion, it's more important as far as the reputation of the company rather than the jurisdiction because you're going to find some very, very bad companies that are outside the 14 eyes and you'll still find some very good companies that are located within the 14 eyes. So even if you find a VPN service that is headquartered or located within the 14 eyes, I would not immediately eliminate it as a possible service that you want to use. When it comes to logging, basically it comes down to how much do you trust that company with your data as to whether or not they honor the no log policy. Please keep in mind that every company defines no logging differently and so really, if you really want to know what they're doing, you're going to have to go through their terms of service or their privacy policies to really get a better idea and also do some research on the company, check out their history, check out what other reviewers are saying. So that way you have a better idea and know whether or not that company actually values your privacy and whether or not they are actually logging you. There have been VPN services in the past that have claimed no logging and then have been caught actually logging. So those are some of the main things you want to look at when choosing a VPN service, the reputation of the company, whether or not they log you, and where they are located as far as jurisdiction within or without the 14 eyes. But there are some additional things you do want to look at. For example, whether or not they let you pay with cryptocurrency or cash. You want to make sure that the application is available for all the different devices you use, whether it's Windows or Mac or iOS or Android. And you also want to check to make sure that you can use it on multiple devices uh, devices at the same time. Some added bonuses would be whether or not it has a malware blocker. I don't think this is a necessary thing, but a lot of VPN services do offer a malware blocker within the VPN service itself. I would also try to find a VPN that has a trial service or at least gives you a 30-day back guarantee because you may look at a review of a VPN service and it may sound great and then you try it and have a different experience. And this is because we're all using different devices from different locations through different internet service providers and we're doing different things on the internet. And so your experience may not be exactly the same as everyone else. And so trying to find a VPN that has either a trial period or a 30 day back guarantee where you can try it out, make sure that it's working and then it works well for you. 
And one of the cons with a VPN is that it can slow down your internet uh, speeds a little bit. So you want to try to find the best VPN that, that doesn't have a huge impact on your internet speeds. It's also wise to try to find a VPN service that is open source. And that means that it's gone through audits just to make sure that the application and service is secure. I also want to mention that just because a VPN service is popular doesn't necessarily mean it's the best. And a lot of people found this out with NordVPN, which was a very, very popular VPN service. And it's even now it's still pretty popular, but we recently found out just a few months back that Nord had a breach where they were hacked and they did not disclose it for quite a long time. Now there is some discussion as to why that may be, such as they wanted to make sure the issue was resolved and that they were secure. Regardless, just keep in mind that even if a VPN service is popular, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best option. And also keep in mind that when a service becomes popular, it often becomes a target of hackers. Now, as far as recommendations, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm just going to give two recommendations. I will list alternatives down below in the notes down in the video description, but these would be my top two recommendations. The top one would be ProtonVPN, which has a great track record with security and privacy. You can go through their website here and see uh, what it is that they do offer. They are based out of Switzerland. And they do have a good uh, no log policy, but I also want to mention that they do have a free option. Now, generally speaking, I do not recommend free VPN services, but again, I do like to offer options. And so if you are looking for a free service, this is one of the few, possibly the only one I would recommend. But I also do want to make it clear that generally speaking, I don't recommend free VPNs. I usually recommend just going with the paid services, regardless, again, if you're looking for free there is one here and ProtonVPN is one of the best options available in my opinion. And also please keep in mind that this one is available for whichever device you may be using such as Mac, Windows, it's also available for mobile devices and so whichever device it is that you're using you will be covered with ProtonVPN. Now as an alternative or second option I recommend is Molvad VPN and they do a lot of good things uh, with this service. If we scroll down here just a little bit we can see one of the best things that they offer is they don't require an email or phone number or any personal information when signing up for this service. And you can even pay them in cash or cryptocurrency. So it's really private, which is a great thing. And they just have a flat rate fee that you pay. Now, one down downside with Molvad is they don't have a application for mobile devices. So if you're using a phone, iOS or Android, this may not be the service for you, but if you're just using a uh, Mac or Windows, this is definitely one I would look at for sure. At the end of the day, just make sure that you're using a good, reputable VPN service and that if you're using public Wi-Fi, you use that VPN service every single time that you connect. I would even get into the habit of using it at home. Yes, there are some cons with the slower speeds of a VPN and even sometimes you may run into hiccups depending on what you're doing on the internet. Some websites may not work if you're using a VPN service, but by and large, the pros far outweigh the cons. And so we can all experience greater privacy and security if we all get into the habit of using a VPN. That's everything for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please post them down below. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you found it helpful, please go ahead and consider sharing it. And please also consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notifications on future videos.